Hi, my name is Agi Schwaber and I work as a lead developer at Aurum uh, GmbH um, in Nuremberg, Germany. Um, I have more than 12 years of experience in SharePoint development and recently I started a blog where I regularly write and publish my solutions. Um, SPFX app.dev. Um, I have to admit I'm a bit nervous because it's my first presentation here on the PMP community call. Uh, moreover, I hope my English is good enough for you guys to understand everything. Today I may uh, present two of my solutions. The first one is a SPFX um, web part, simple password fault. I will talk about the highlights and then show a, a demonstration. Um, the second solution has nothing to do with um, SPFX, but with SharePoint. It's a browser extension. Let's start with the web part simple password uh, fault. As the name suggests, it's a web part that's um, securely source passwords and usernames. The, the, the ID uh, didn't uh, come from me. At that at time, a colleague had asked me, hey, Sage, is it possible to create a web part that stores user data encrypted and can only be um, accessed by mass password? I just answered, yes, of course it's possible. And my third open source SPFX solution was born. The requirements are simple. The data must be stored encrypted in SharePoint. The fault must first uh, unlock to view or edit the data. Um, the encrypted values can only be decrypted with the master password. Username and password can be copied to the clipboard with one click. Uh, fault can be closed manually or will be closed automatically after five minutes. There are, of course, a few more features. So let's get right to the demo. Just uh, imagine you have uh, several project sites on your internet. The team member works um, uh, for a customer who has their own environment and has created one, only one, uh, user for this project. The easiest way is to share this data with all team members. This would be um, best uh, be done of the uh, project site. Then, um, since there is no company-wide password fault like KeyPass or, or Bitwarden or something like that, um, then this uh, site um, looks like that. The problem is, this is not a fictional story. Um, I have seen something like this myself. It goes without saying that um, something like this is not uh, insecure. Uh, it is insecure, sorry. Um, uh, right now, at this moment, m many people see the credentials during this presentation. Okay, they are invented, but nevertheless. Now let's play my password fault web part. Okay. Um, I place it the first time, password fault, and then you have to, to uh, set a master password. If you don't set a um, master password, it looks like that one. Um, but we want to set one, uh, let's say PNP community call. Um, you can uh, show the, the password and hide it again. Um, and then let's uh, say uh, the username is the same as um, above, um, super user and um, password one, two, three. And the node is the same as here. Now we save um, the web part and um, publish this page. If you enter a wrong password, for example, just something like test or I don't know, let's see here, test, then the fault uh, will not be open, of, of course. But if we enter the correct password, uh, that was PNP, uh, community pass, uh, or, I forgot the math password. So, um, as you can see here, um, even in this case, uh, the, the password uh, is not visible in plain text, I mean. Um, of course, can, uh, you could um, make it visible again, but um, it's uh, not needed. So, I can copy it um, without uh, um, display it. So, if I now I can um, close the fault if I, uh, the, the username and password is uh, not needed anymore. Or um, if I don't close it, for example, if I refresh the page, it is uh, open. Um, but it's only open for uh, the next uh, five minutes. I demonstrate it quickly because it will be saved in the session storage. Go to the session storage and look for SPFX. As you can see here, it's just um, saved but encrypted. 
And if I remove, for example, this and this value, then it's the same um, as the reload after five minutes. And if I reload uh, the page now, then the fault is closed again. In edit mode, when you go to, to the edit mode, uh, you can um, edit the, 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 the data, but of course you, you need to um, uh, insert the, the master password again. So now you can change all the data or change the master password. And um, um, now you ask maybe, but are the values really safely stored? Um, let's take a look. Switch back to the maintenance uh, uh, mode here. And then to the data. And as you can see here, it's all encrypted. There's the master password, the username, the password, and the node. But is it still possible to, uh, to decrypt it? Yes, if you know the master password and the internal source codes, then it is possible. But then it is easier to type the master password and open the fault. Um, they, uh, that's why I, uh, it's as important that if the master password is forgotten, all uh, data can no longer be recovered. Um, by the way, uh, the solution can, of course, also be added as a tab in Teams as you can see here. So you can uh, have the same functionality in, in Teams as a tab. Okay, guys, let's take a, a quick look into the code. This is here. Um, I think it's not important what happened in the web part and, uh, and in the component because it's a simple fluent UI design and read and write the values in the web part properties. That's, uh, that's why I'm uh, only going to talk about the service. Um, first of all, I use um, the Crypto.js as library for encrypting and decrypting. When a user tries to open the vault, I get the plain master password that the type uh, before typed in master password and um, pass to the open uh, function. Then um, I encrypt the plain text password in the same way as the master password. That means um, um, SHA 256 uh, with individual salt value. And um, chat, uh, check this encrypted um, hashed value with that one that starts in the, in the web part properties. Um, if it's equal, then I open the, the vault, decrypt the data, and set the session storage to keep it open for the next five minutes. This is uh, this uh, few lines. Um, when a user closes the vault, I remove all session storage values and clear all properties. It's here. Because the master password is hashed, I cannot decrypt it. But all other data must be decrypted, of course. That's why I encrypt them uh, with AES, stands for Advanced Encryption Standard. Um, here you can uh, see that it's CryptoJS, AES, encrypt or decrypt. And um, uh, I use every time uh, other secret, um, as you can see here, for example, encrypt password, password secret key, uh, username secret key, and node secret key. And yeah, that's it. That uh, was all the, the magic behind this web part. Now let's look at uh, to a quick summary. The web part is a simple fault web part to keep your data secret. At the moment, it's uh, not yet available in the PMP specific samples repository, but I'm working on it. But in the meantime, you can look at my official GitHub uh, repository for the solution. You can um, also download the solution there. For the next release, I plan to add a new feature that allows the user to secure multiple usernames, passwords, and nodes. Okay, uh, that was a little insight into my web part. Uh, now let's move on to the uh, second part, my browser extension. The idea is very simple, an extension that offers various dynamic quick links to SharePoint, such as site content, site settings, and so on. Um, I mean, who doesn't know it? A site is loaded, then it takes a while until the settings icon or gear icon is displayed. Then you usually have to make several clicks to get to site settings, for example. And on a modern uh, page, this is typically done via site settings um, icon, site information, view all site settings, of course, you can also quickly enter the URL to the browser. Uh, you probably know the URL, don't mistype it, and are faster than the UI and the mouse clicks. 
the extension should help to reach it faster and more dynamically. Uh, by the way, uh, this is my first browser extension I have never developed one before. The requirements are simple. Keep it simple. Get the current Windows URL to determine the SharePoint uh, URL. Uh, no SharePoint API calls are made. No check is made to see if the user has the permission. It means if uh, you click on a link and you have not not the permission for that, it's just uh, the default uh, existing night page appears. No data is read, stored, or passed um, onto third parties. You can store your custom URLs and um, links for developers are included. Okay, let's start with a short demo. I'm here again on the same site as, as previously. And now uh, I want to navigate to, let's say, um, website permissions. Here is my extension. It's installed here. I click on that and uh, now I click on website permissions. Now the, the extension um, redirects me to the uh, right URL to um, layouts 15 user.aspx. Now you probably think then save it to the favorites. But the favorites are not dynamic. That means it is always fixed static URL. The browser extension, on the other hand, is dynamic. It tries to read the URL um, of the current site and determines the web URL, web application URL, and page URL, if you are on a page, of course. I, I will prove it on another side, this one. As you can see, uh, here is uh, the site simple best default, and here is the site showroom. Okay. Now I click the same website permissions and um, I'm still on showroom, not on um, a simple password, but the, the same SPX page behind. That means it's more flexible, more dynamic than the favorite uh, bar. Additionally, you can use the SPX debug parameters. Let's say this one. Mm, I have here an example. This is a completely newly created SPFX application customized extension. I have uh, not made any changes. Now I went to test it. So I go to, into my code, into the manifest file, and just copy the, the ID of this. It's uh, already running. And um, now I want to click to my extension, say SPFX app extension uh, uh, debug, then uh, the extension asks for the application ID. I click to OK, and um, now it, this is the application customer to, to be test. Um, as you can see here, it's, well, it was pay, uh, passed to the um, SQL parameter in the, in the uh, browser. Before we look at the code, I would like to show the settings of this extension because it's possible to, to um, uh, set up the uh, links. Uh, you can set, for example, uh, the headlines. Uh, you can override it and then you can see here, this is the default uh, um, URLs that uh, comes with the, with the plugin, but um, you cannot uh, change the URL, but uh, only the labels. And you can say if it's in enabled or disabled. Um, the same for the pages, um, but this uh, section will be um, visible only if you're on a, a page, of course, and then you have the possibility to set custom URLs. Um, for example, let's check this one. This is the term store. Um, I will create one, um, save it, and now I can go to Term store and this redirects me to the terms. So, so yeah, that was uh, the setup of the of this extension. Okay, um, now let's uh, take a quick look into the code. It's uh, very simple and only one file. It's just one file, and um, the the logic behind uh, this is um, get the URL of the current tab, remove. Um, all the URL parameters, check if the current site is a SharePoint.com site. If not, an information is displayed in the extension because the extension works only in a SharePoint tenant. Otherwise, it will check if it is a page um, here um, in the site page library or pages library. Um, if yes, it will try to build the URL of the page. 
The same is then done for libraries, uh, lists, and layout uh, layouts path. At the end, you have, in the best case, all needed URLs and can uh, build them accordingly. Um, here in create list item is the the, place, uh, the placeholders are replaced um, and the actual link is built um, because you, as, as mentioned before, you can use this placeholder when your links uh, and this will be replaced with the current web URL, web, uh, web app uh, URL and page URL. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, here are some more links to my blog posts and the code for the um, extensions and solutions. And I would say, keep your data secret, but not my web parts and extensions. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Sergey. Really, really cool stuff and great job on the on the first time presenter as well. So thank you. Thank you for doing this. And I know that it's always the first time is, is always the most, let's say, terrifying one. But you did an awesome job. Really, really good job. And thank the solutions you. were really, really nice as well. So awesome stuff. Thank you. E excellent. Thank you, Sergey, on that one.